welcome to another brand new episode of Speak Your Truth. So today we'll be talking about loneliness and we all know that loneliness is a very current topic, especially in this pandemic times when we're all meant to be social distancing. So my guest today is Susan. Uh, Susan is here today to speak about loneliness. So let's get started. So my guest today is Susan. So Susan is a surgery nurse and an interior designer. So Susan, thank you for being here on the show. Thank you. Uh, It's my pleasure. It's lovely to have you. (laughs) So um, the topic loneliness, it's a very important topic. And um, especially in these times, in these pandemic times that we're living in, it's, it's a very, very strange, strange experience we're going through. And a lot of people are also going through loneliness. So um, I think it would be interesting for us to tackle the topic a little bit and um, just, you know, uh, discuss it a little bit and talk about what it means to be lonely. So what is loneliness and what does it entail to be lonely? Yes. So we mostly mix uh, lonely and being alone as something similar. Yes. But to me, uh, lonely means a feeling of being disconnected from... Yes the outer world from other people and disconnection actually means uh, not to be seen or or heard or appreciated Uh, and this kind of uh, is something that we are all facing almost everyone goes through it right absolutely but um, yeah this this pandemic is I think bringing it up more often than people realize yes, it. Yes, yes. Yes, you, you, you're definitely right. Loneliness is not the same as being alone, right? right? Aloneness, I would say. Mm-hmm. Aloneness is different from loneliness. And like you said, loneliness, it, it is true because you can have a lot of people around you, yeah. right? You, you could be in a relationship, right? But you're mm-hmm. feeling lonely. You're feeling disconnected. And um, I think maybe the reason for that could be because one doesn't feel understood. Right. Do you, do you, get, do you get me? Yeah. Like, when you don't feel understood, you feel like you're alone in your ideas, in your, in your feelings, in your thoughts. You, you feel kind of disconnected, even, even when you're surrounded with people. Yeah. So it is absolutely true. That, um, that loneliness is a kind of disconnection. So in this sense, would you say, okay, so we have a pandemic situation at the moment. So everyone has, you know, to social distance. So we're not like having this same connection that we right. used to have, right. the physical connection. So what would you say um, made, you know, causes kind of the loneliness among people you know why would you say people are experiencing loneliness in these present times even though we know obviously that loneliness is not the same as aloneness mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so there's this disconnection thing mm-hmm. so when people are now faced with a pandemic which forces them to actually physically disconnect right, right? right. I mean I think the answer is already there it's you know the disconnection the physical disconnection right. is what makes the people lonely so they attach a lot of importance I would say to the physical um, uh, to the presence you know the, the physical presence right okay so how can one tackle that You know, in in these present times, you know, how can one tackle this kind of loneliness that comes with too much attachment to the physical presence of having someone there? Right. So I think what people need to realize is this feeling of loneliness is not because you are not, you're distancing yourself from the people. It is mostly because of the issues that you have not dealt with. You have other stuff that are going inside you. And, and the thing is, um, before this, we always had stuff that we could do to distract ourselves, like going to parties yes. or meeting new people all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was actually distracting us from getting to this place of solitude and dealing with our emotions. And this is actually the thing that 
people are now uh, in solitude and all these emotions are, are coming, coming out yes. and they don't have they can't deal with it yes the social distraction that they had is missing and that is actually um, for them they think it is loneliness but it is on the contrary also um, many people are doing good because of this covid pandemic yes the thing is um, people are starting to be, like be alone most of the time yes. and they 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 kind of uh, can re, um, reflect on yes. their emotions going within going within exactly. you know connecting i think it's so important it's, it's so important right. to have this time mm -hmm. you know in your hands to actually reflect to go yeah. within to get to know yourself and yeah. um, so it's and there is also the thing about soul connection you know mm -hmm. we are all connected even if someone is not physically present so people would say yeah i miss my grandma i miss my parents i miss my you know friends i can't really like connect with them like i used to yeah. so i mean we have technology right? right so we have social media we have all of this which is still possible to talk to people so i i i believe that like you said, it's true, you know, people have not really dealt with, you know, themselves. They've right. not really confronted, like, every aspect of themselves, yeah. even including the shadow part of themselves, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's using technology to distract themselves from, you know, confronting those aspects of themselves. Yeah. And then suddenly there is this social distancing, there's this pandemic which is forcing everyone to be on their own mm -hmm. and they just can't deal with it. So, um... Yeah, so I, 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 I think that, you know, it's very important not to first to go within, right, to be able to reflect on oneself. Yeah. And it's also important to detach sometimes, exactly. to understand that aloneness is not the same thing like loneliness. Yeah. And once we can know this, then it gives up us the incentive to go within and understand ourselves and also understand that we can still be connected to other people. Yeah. We can still be connected to, you know, friends mm -hmm. and family, not only through technology and social media and, you know, and all of that, but also in spirit. I know it, it, right. it sounds weird, but, you know, you, you, you can feel connected yes. to someone. Yeah. And I actually feel this even stronger, especially in this pandemic times, right. you know, that this, this concept of soul connection, where you don't, you don't really need someone to be physically there yeah. for you mm -hmm. to feel their presence. Right. So, so people are like one positive side of it is that people are only taking their time for the people they really care about like their family, like grandmother, whoever. But that is actually a really good thing because then they are only getting connected with the people who really understand them, who really see them. And this is actually doing them better, good than bad. And right. the only people who say they have got more lonely after the COVID is because um, they are either con not uh, connecting with uh, the, the people who they resonate with or they are uh, they were very much distracted before and now they don't have those distractions anymore so they don't have this distraction they, they don't have this distraction anymore because you know it's just like um, everything that they identified with everything they ever identified with is now like they are being pulled away from it okay so but but think about this they they always had technology, right? right? So technology was always there. Social media was always there. Okay, so, and this is the main thing that people use to distract themselves, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, so I would, I don't know how I would explain this because when people are feeling lonely, have they been distracting themselves by physically connecting with people and now they cannot connect with people anymore and now they feel lonely you, yeah. you know what i'm trying to say yeah. so i mean your argument is, is correct i mean mm -hmm. your argument is a lot of distraction a lot of things that people occupy themselves with distracts them from actually connecting going within okay so but the only thing i would say people are missing in this pandemic times is this physical yeah. connection mm -hmm. with people 
you know, the physical connection, like I want you to be here, your presence, you're here, I'm here, I see you and I'm happy, I'm cool. And also it's, you know, like hugging and, you know, this physical contact. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that is being pulled away. So, and now people are lonely. Do you think that had been a distraction which need not be? Like, what would you oh, say? Um, How would you tackle that aspect of, you know, like... Right. Yeah. So, um, the feeling that this physical proximity and those things, I think they actually are were very helpful to make people feel connected. Yes. And of course, I can understand that people miss that. Yeah. But there is there are also other ways where people can uh, feel more connected. Yeah. With people, um, like for example, if you are surrounded by people who you feel like they totally get you who totally understand what you're trying to say yeah you don't need a real hug <laughs> I, I feel like i feel like you know i don't have to hug 10 people to feel connected. isn't it i mean you know i'm not i know you like you know um uh you came in and we didn't need to hug, but we just <laughs> felt so, you, yeah. when you came in, you know, there was no hugging, no nothing, it was just, but right. we felt so like, as if we just took off from where we left the last time we right. met, isn't it? Exactly. It's just like, it just went so, it, it flowed so naturally and it was, right. this connection was there again. When I saw you, when we saw each other again, it was yeah. just like, we didn't need to hug and oh, Suzanne, it's yes. lovely. So it's, um... It's, yeah, you're right in that sense. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, um, yeah, um, with you and also with um, the, the meetup that you um, uh, created, Yeah. what I felt was something so extraordinary. The connection that I felt was extraordinary because when I used to come that Sunday... So she's talking about the, um, the divine feminine circle of love. It's a group that I created for women to come together to support each other and uh women who are spiritually spiritually conscious and um who share the same um values and interests so that's what she's just talking about <laughs> exactly so when i came in there and started uh this um I'm, i don't know two three hours of talking it would give me so much a feeling of connectedness that it would help me go through another week of wear and tear, really. Because that, that's something that we really need. Yes. I was not coming there and being physically <laughs> absent. Absolutely. But, but we still but yeah. still we felt so connected. Right. Wasn't wasn't yeah. it? I mean, apart from we had to stop it. Now we're now online. Yeah. <laughs> but we still it's still the connection is still there. But right. you know, it's a feeling of being understood, Susan. Yeah. It's it's not like, you know, when you have a feeling of being understood, then um, it, it is so important. It connects people. It connects. It's, it's, it takes away this feeling of loneliness because loneliness can also, like I already said, be being misunderstood mm -hmm. is also a kind of loneliness, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So um, when we came together in those those times that we had physical meetups, it was always nice. The energy was, you know, the presence of everyone together was so strong. Yeah. And then there was this, you know, lockdown and you know the whole rules and regulation that stopped us from meeting. But we went online, mm -hmm. but still the connect. You know, the, the connection yeah. was still there and it was still so strong. So I think people can find that. Yeah. People can try to connect through such means, through technology and, yeah. and, and all of that. Yes, you asked me, like, how can people tackle uh, loneliness? So what I had come up with was, um, so we go into a profession some of the times that we don't like. Sometimes we, we do something because, like, I know so many people who have become doctors because their parents want them to be doctors or lawyers or engineers just because they get pressure from society or from the family. And when they go in there, they feel lonely in there even though they are present yes, with the people all the yes, time yes. because they cannot find a common ground. They cannot find the people who are in the same ground as them. And they cannot find their kind of people. How people feel lonely even in places where 
everyone is right there. Yes, when you're surrounded by people, you can be lonely in your job. I mean, Mm -hmm. you can be also very good in your job, but you feel lonely. But the loneliness is just because your soul is not... It's not yeah. what you. It's not your true life purpose, right. you know. So if you're doing, you're working a job which is not your true life purpose. There is the tendency of you feeling kind of. of you, you get a feeling of loneliness because right. it's not. You're not in your element. You know. Right. You're not in your in in your surrounding. And so. Um, yeah. So I think I think if people follow their passion. Uh, I don't think that people need to just start changing the profession. No. Right <laughs> they have but, to. Yeah. You have to make ends meet. You can't just, <laughs> yeah. you know, like quit your job. <laughs> it's, yeah, reality. And, uh, yeah. But if people uh, start to see, like, what do they really want? What What is it that they feel passionate about? And just try to find a, a group, a group of people who also have the same kind of passion. I think they'll find a common ground. Yes. And they feel yes. seen, they feel heard yeah. from those people. Yeah. And I yeah. think, yeah, like a meetup like you did, there are also lots of other meetups. You can, you can organize it yourself. Yeah. But you can find your kind of people. Yeah. I think that helps a lot. With yeah, and I, yeah, I think people should also come to terms with aloneness and try to separate it from loneliness because aloneness sometimes is so important. I know, yeah. me personally, I know that sometimes I also like to just be detached from, you know, right. like society, just, you know, uh, not to be contaminated by, you know, I, I yeah. deliberately do that. I need this aloneness sometimes, you know, yeah. and it is from, it's like my well, it's, it's that's where I can recharge, rejuvenate. So sometimes people, you know, confuse loneliness with the expectation of pleasure to repeat itself. Pleasure is something you cannot hide away from, you cannot run away from, Mm. you cannot like deny it, you cannot resist it. It's a present, you you have to be aware of it. You have to experience it, sometimes you experience it in the moment, you're with friends, you have blast, you have, you know, like a strong connection, you have a great time. But the moment you have expectation of pleasure repeating itself, right. then you're pulling yourself into a dark corner mm-hmm. and then you start feeling, oh, I'm lonely. Mm-hmm. When we're expecting it to repeat, I want it again tomorrow, mm-hmm. okay? I want it, I want to have this experience again next week. I want to have this experience with you again, you know, with family, friends or whatever. Right. I want to have it again. And then people feel they're experiencing loneliness. So maybe we can think about it from that, from that perspective, enjoy it and let it last as long as it lasts. And that's it. Not creating like expectations or fantasies of it repeating Mm -hmm. itself. So if people can just maybe for once, just think about that and it might pull people away from loneliness, I would say. And also I think loneliness arises due to a lot of superficiality you know we're living in a fast-paced world where you know everything is superficial and you know it's people don't like to go to depths you know they 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 are either scared of it they're scared of vulnerability Mm -hmm. or they just don't want to go beyond what is superficial okay so i think once we learn to be more soulful, right? The moment we learn to be more soulful, mm-hmm. there is no way we can ever be lonely. Right. You know? Yeah. Because when, when you're soulful, then you understand the concept of soul connection. We tend to understand the concept of universal wholeness, mm-hmm. right? That souls are connected, that we are all connected, that whatever affects one part, affects the whole right so you start thinking about um, not just yourself you start thinking about the environment you start thinking about everyone you start thinking about you start being more conscious you start living consciously and um, I think the pandemic is probably forcing people to being more soulful you know what what would you say I I think uh, more and more people are becoming more conscious right like it's like really opened a lot of eyes like right. made people more aware. Yes, like I mean, it depends on the person what they choose to do with their 
alone, the solitude, what yeah. they choose to do. But um, solitude is actually a really powerful thing. The best things happen in solitude, like enlightenment happens in solitude. Uh, yes, the most creative you are, you are in solitude. Yes. The most reflective you yes. are also in yes. solitude. Yes. So people, so there are people who would take this as an opportunity and and work on themselves. Absolutely. Or there are people who would think this is a terrible thing that's happening. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's a it's a blessing. You know, I I'm sometimes careful to say this out loud because there are people who have been affected so much by this pandemic by this whole so you have to be careful when you say but it is been it has been a blessing mm -hmm. a complete blessing for me and f for my family and it's just like it's it's opened my eyes it really it made me it changed me completely mm -hmm. i went through this complete transformation of all things to to the pandemic right. and um yeah so like you said, the solitude, you know, I was always, you know, like busy working, you know, I, I run a language school, um, I run a gallery and, and all the other projects that I'm doing. So I'm constantly doing something, mm. right? So, but there are times I also find time for, you know, this creativity, like I, I mentioned earlier, but it's always very short, you know, like too right, short. Like, right. So, but this, for the first time ever, I had, especially the first lockdown, mm -hmm. I had... You know, it was just like I had all the time, you know, and I started exploring nature. I fell in love with nature. I started, you know, like um, living consciously. I, you know, started creating my own organic makeup, my own organic, you know, skincare products and, and uh, started a diploma, you know, online thing, you know, on organic skincare. And it's just, you know, a lot of things. I really saw my kids like... You know, you don't see, I don't, I don't know, you don't have kids, right? So you don't really see your kids because they're either in school, you know, you see them in the morning and then they're off to school mm -hmm. and then you see them again in the evening, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the weekend. So you really have no control. You can't really, see, you don't see your children. You don't really know them. Right. Like right. totally because yeah. it's like half of their life is not, you're not with them. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it? So for the first time, I really, really saw them yeah. and loved them even more. And it just, you know, like, it was such a, it was a blissful experience being together with my family and just, you know, enjoying time together, being creative together and, you know, and just, you know, and of course, you know, learning, teaching my child, you know, I'm also from the pedagogical, you know, um, field. So being able to teach my child, you know, with her, you know, school curriculum and actually guiding her through the process of learning. And we all didn't want to go back. <laughs> like, she didn't want to go back to school and yeah. I didn't want them to go back. I just wanted to have them all at home and just, you know, like, but you have to be realistic, you know, yeah. like they say, money, money makes the world go round. So you have to, <laughs> you know, at some point back to the work, 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 work. So, but, you know, what I learned is I actually learned that it's okay to downscale, right? right? So long as you have enough to yeah. meet, make ends meet, right? right? You, you, so long as there is enough and you can sustain yourself, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm letting go of this mentality of have, have, having, you know, like, right. yeah. like more and more and more and more and more and, and more and more and more and more and more, you know, so... And so I'm just like, now I'm okay with less is more, you know, yeah. like I've downscaled a lot and it's also okay because, you know, um, it's not like we have a choice really <laughs> with the pandemic, but yeah. you know, I've learned a lot from it. I have actually yeah. learned a lot and it's made me even, I've never been happier and healthier and it's just, you know, I'm just living my bliss in this pandemic. It's just, yeah. you know, um, yeah, maybe because I've always had a life, a work life. So maybe that is why. So for the first time, I was forced, you know, like you have to sit at home. You know, when, when it was just the first lockdown, I was, what? Do nothing? It was just like, do nothing. But yes, you have to do nothing. Yeah. So I, you know, had to readjust. And um, so it's all been a learning process. And like you said, it's so important for 
us to know what the lesson is mm. from this whole experience and find time to be creative, to find time to to uh, create something out of the solitude. Yeah. You know, to, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's about appreciating the small stuff that you've been always uh, disregarding yes. all the time. <laughs> and now you see, like, there's yes. so much to be thankful yes. for every yes. day. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, being, uh, talking about being thankful, gratitude. Gratitude. So gratitude. much. It, you, don't, you don't see it because you don't want to see it, right? Absolutely. There are things that you can be grateful for yes, every day. Absolutely. Once you start the list goes yeah, on. Yeah, I never really I never really was like enjoyed home. You know, I have this lovely home but I never really if I if not for the first lockdown, mm-hmm. I never really you know, I just wake up, you know, get ready, work and you know, it's just like a holiday. I never really like it was like for the first time I was having a holiday at home. Right. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. I really enjoyed, it and I saw, uh, you know, there's this forest just behind in my garden that I explored during the, the lockdown. And so, you know, it's really amazing. Mm-hmm. It's um, I'm thankful. I'm really thankful. Of course, there is the downsides to the pandemic, <laughs> but we just want to stay positive, yeah. and yeah. we just want to see the best side yeah. of you know of the whole experience. Yeah. So, and so um, this reminds me of of a saying which says, um, which goes. Uh, pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. Like, uh, yes. yes, you cannot <laughs> live a life without pain. Pain yes. is gonna be there yeah. no matter what you yeah, do. Yeah. But, but suffering, suffering is know, a, choice. That's a choice. It is. <laughs> it is. And I love that saying. It, it is. It makes you come to this position where you're not playing victim anymore. Yes. Yeah. It is like you have a choice. You can yes. still make a decision that you're going to look at what yeah. you still have. Where did you get that saying from? Where did you get that? It's, it's, um, I think it's I've been beautiful. listening a lot to Sadhguru. It's been, it's, it's a beautiful quote. <laughs> I love is, it. it pain is inevitable. Pain is inevitable. But suffering is a choice. Yeah. Now go figure. <laughs> Right. Um, it's been so lovely chatting with you, um, yeah, Suzanne. Thank you amazing. so much for your presence here today and also for the lovely conversation on loneliness. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.